Well, hello and welcome to the Profit Express. I'm Tim Healy. I'm inviting you to join me each and every Wednesday so you could be prepared to win the battle for business. That's right. Now, listen, I know you're out there. You're closing deals. You're making money. You're turning prospects into profits. So I got to make it worth your while. That's why I have on the kinds of guests that you can listen, learn, and earn from. Today's guest is absolutely no exception. So, hey, thanks for being on board and sharing some of your time with me today. And as always, a Big thank you to our sponsor, Corbett Public Relations, where they've been promoting and protecting businesses and brands for over 30 years. So do yourself a favor. Visit Bill and his team at CorbettPR.com. That's C-O-R-B-E-T-T-P-R.com. Welcome aboard, everybody. Now, I have found when we are pursuing and trying to win the battle for business. That for myself and so many other people, that when we have a goal, and if that goal is a must-have, something we've got to accomplish, something we've got to do in life and in business, if it's a must-have, our chances of success increase dramatically. And it was actually one such goal that led today's guest on a rather unique journey, one that she could never have envisioned from when she started. You see, she started her journey as a kindergarten teacher. That was her dream job. And like so many of us, we have student loan debt. And she had $25,000 in student loan debt that she had to pay off. That was her must have. So she figures, okay, I'm a kindergarten teacher. How am I going to pay off this debt? And she had an idea, and it wasn't just, well, let me ride for Uber or let me do DoorDash. She actually had a very unique experience of jumping in to the deep end of a do-it-yourself project to renovate her parents' kitchen. And in so doing, she fell in love with the DIY, the do-it-yourself projects. So what she started to do was furniture flipping as a way to kind of chip away that $25,000 in debt. And she kind of married her background again, career as a kindergarten teacher, with her newfound passion her, of her side hustle of doing flipping furniture, right? She kind of married the both, and she is the furniture flipping teacher. She's Lauren Hull. She's today's guest. But where it gets also very interesting is she just wasn't really paying off debt, and maybe that was her first thought of all this. But as she kept doing it, and as it kept evolving, and then she ended up having a, a YouTube channel teaching people, because let's not forget she's a teacher, she's teaching people how to flip furniture, her notoriety grew. Her social media following grew. Her business grew, and it kept growing. And again, Pretty amazing journey because not a lot of kindergarten teachers think that, hey, one day I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But that's actually what happened to today's guest, Lauren Hull. And her business ended up becoming so successful that she had to make what I have to imagine would be a pretty tough decision of walking away from the career. So Lauren Hull is today's guest. She's the furniture flipping teacher with her partner, uh, her partner, Neiman Sneed. And together, they have created what would be the envy of many small business people, a YouTube subscriber following of 200,000 people who are looking to get their tips on how to flip furniture, an Instagram following of, I think it's nearly 200,000 people and growing. And so to me, Lauren and Sneed and their story is, is interesting on so many different levels. It is, hey, I got $25,000 in debt I got to pay off. How am I going to do it? Let me find a side hustle. And it becomes a passion and evolves and evolves and evolves. So on so many levels, I know you're going to find inspiration and some great insight into becoming a successful entrepreneur. That's why I'm having him on the show today. So it is a pleasure to have on board, again, Lauren Hull, the furniture flipping teacher and her partner, Neiman Sneed. Good afternoon. Hello. Thanks for having us on. Great intro. You couldn't. Have, I couldn't have said that any better. I don't think she could have either. <laughs> no, well, listen, I, 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 I do my research, and I, I, I just you know relay the facts with some enthusiasm. But it's it's the story. 
And that's one thing I love, you know, you know, being a business owner myself, uh, being the host of the Profit Express. Uh, Instagram is, is a treasure trove of great stories. And I started following you guys. I don't know how long ago it was. I'm like, wow, this seems kind of interesting. And, I, you know, how you guys, you, you know, you, how you create the videos, the posts, how you communicate. Again, from a marketing perspective, we're going to get into this. Beautifully done. Really, really well done. I'm, I'm jealous. I really am. And then the story itself and the, the one reel that you did telling your story, I'm like, I got to have these folks on. So let me kind of start there and I'm, I'm, I'll throw the questions out to both of you and you guys can just jump in. You had the background as the kindergarten teacher. You found this side hustle and passion of flipping furniture and the do-it-yourself projects. How did you kind of marry the two? I mean, you could have just flipped furniture, but you added this whole element of teaching people in the YouTube channel. How did that really take place? Well, very first, I started flipping furniture just to pay off my student loan debt, like by myself. I was just mm -hmm. doing it during the summer days, and um, I really just started enjoying my time. Um, and even when school resumed and I was teaching again after that COVID year, I continued to flip furniture on my off time. And then um, not long after that, Neiman um, was, was sort of separated from a marketing company that he was a part of. And so he has video background. And when we decided to put, um, our talents together, we needed sort of an, we had a story, um, but we needed sort of an angle to, um, to go with our channel. You know, we didn't just want to be another channel, um, that taught, that talked about furniture flipping. And I just, always loved teaching like you said and like you everyone can tell in all the videos so um we sort of were like you know let's do furniture flipping and then i'm a teacher right now um but if anything were to ever happen which we never really thought it would but it did um, but it would still <laughs> make sense because um i was still teaching on youtube now you, so here's the funny thing um normally and this is this is a testament to the marketing side. I wouldn't really be somebody who would follow somebody who does furniture flipping. You know, I'm not, I'm never going to do that myself. I mean, the, the pieces you guys create, they look great. Okay. But I'm not going to do it myself, but it's just honestly, you know, and that's why we're on the profit express talking about it. It's the story. Okay. You have a great story, which is one element that a lot of entrepreneurs don't give themselves credit for. They don't share their story and you, you guys do a great job of it. Um, so then let me ask you this then, when did you realize, because, you know, you mm. said you had your dream job, you were a kindergarten teacher, you stepped away from that. How tough was that decision? It was very tough. Um, I knew that I was going to miss the kids, uh, first and foremost, but mm. there were mm -hmm. also some things like in just you know, the school system as a whole, the education system as a whole that I also knew that I wasn't going to miss. And so like there were hmm. parts of me that it was sort of bittersweet in a way. Um, the reason that I all ever went into teaching is because of my love for kids. Um, right, so right. that was the main part that I was going to miss. But um, other than that, like we were just really enjoying like our time together and like being able to build this thing that again, we didn't even plan. Like we were just like, let's document this. And then it just sort of took off and, and now here we are. <laughs> it was the most unintentional business being started that I'd ever say in the history of businesses being started. But <laughs> we noticed very soon that, you know, what we were being blessed with and what was, you know, in our hands was something serious if we decided that we wanted to take it seriously. You know, it was almost that responsibility for others and bringing value to others, inspiring, empowering others was right. just becoming something that was being gifted to us and don't just treat it lightly. Uh, well said. Now, so I, I'm, I'm getting the sense, correct me if I'm wrong, that it's not like the two of you sat down around a table and put together a real structured business plan for this. Am I right in thinking that? 
Yeah. So <laughs> it was November 17th that I had exited my marketing company. And, right. you know, she had been doing her projects for the last six to eight months. And mm-hmm. people were messaging her saying, you, you should share more of this on your Instagram, on Facebook. And right. so as soon as I exited out of that company, um, it was like the 23rd of November, right before Thanksgiving, her parents, the best people ever on this planet, they were going down to one of their favorite casinos and her mom will probably be like, oh my gosh, why'd you say that? <laughs> uh, but they were headed down to a casino for Thanksgiving. And so it was just going to be her and I, and she came to me and said, you know what? I, I think we should start up a YouTube channel. And, you know, I have nothing now to do. And I just said, yes. And so, you know, sure. the next day, the 24th, we filmed. And then the 25th, we launched our like first origin video. Oh gosh. And we're just like, we're going to document <laughs> this whole process and see how it goes. Okay. So when you said you launched your first uh, video, Lauren kind of cringed a little bit. So now you guys have done yeah. tons. I don't know how many videos you've done. Um, Hundreds. Look, looking back at that first one and looking where you are today, what, what, what have you learned about the production of videos? Mm. Well, I, you got to start somewhere, <laughs> right, um, right. but I literally, that very first video, I literally wrote word for word what I was going to say. And I basically <laughs> like read it real quick. Okay. Put it down, like set it in the, in the camera, read it right. real quick, you know, over and over. And it was even maybe like a three minute, I don't know. It wasn't a very long video at all. Right. Um, but I have personally gotten so much more comfortable in front of the camera over the past two years. Um, but he always, you know, was there to push me up and like encourage me and things like that. And then his skills with video and editing at the, he was um, our full-time editor at the time. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. like just made it flow, made it seamless, made it look like I was doing a great job. <laughs> I think a big, big overall lesson from filming for so like so many videos is that the more that you can be, and, and this might sound cliche, but if people just will show up as themselves and be as authentic as possible, yeah. you don't put that pressure on yourself to be something that you're not. And so then, you know, the more that she started to show up just being her, she's more relaxed, just very casual. And uh, it, it took me a lot to learn like, no, I was seeing Mr. Beast videos and it was so fast paced, blah, 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 blah. But it really has proved to me that there is an uh, audience Mm -hmm. for every person that is being authentic. I I like the way you said that because, yeah, like you said, you referenced Mr. Beast, you know, completely different audience, completely different target market, if you will. Um, But as as I watch the videos, what what I see, like if I had to describe Lauren in these videos, relaxed having fun enjoying what she's doing that that's what i get from it you know and i've watched quite quite a few of them um so so lauren you you you, you're doing the the furniture flipping you're you know weaving in you know your background as to who you are as a teacher obviously and the youtube channel is a big part of what you guys do now for for the business owners watching and listening sales professionals in today's business environment in 2023, almost without fail, to be successful in business and to grow, almost all industries have to have a social presence, a social media presence. So Neiman, since this seems to be your end of the business, um, and you guys are still, you know, you're basically, as companies go, very new. You know, it's only been a couple of years. I mean, honestly, if you think about the the timeline, it's still very, very short, you know? Yes. Um, So you have somebody who's listening to you right now. They see your presence like, man, these guys are knocking out of the park. They've got hundreds of thousands of followers. What is your strategy without overwhelming somebody? How do you approach delivering Lauren's story and message? Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And. I think as human beings, we can get into this rat race of trying to complicate things when they are a lot more simple than uh, you want them to be, because Mm -hmm. that makes it easy to do, although it's actually in the doing that makes it hard. Right. So what, what my strategy is, and this has been something that, you know, we've kind of fine tuned over the years, 
But the strategy is essentially putting ourselves in the shoes of whomever now, and this is now, right? It didn't start out this intentional or this strategic, but putting (laughs) ourselves into the shoes of that person that may be watching the video, what questions are they asking? What problems are they having? So that way, when we're shooting content, you know, we're shooting so much content that if we're not asking ourselves those questions before we go into this production, it can get almost monotonous. And it just, you know, she starts to do things because she knows it like the back of her hands. But we continually put ourselves in a place of where are the people at that we're trying to reach or that we're trying to talk to. So that helps not make it about us and make it Mm -hmm. about the consumer or the client themselves. And that I think keeps us on track with what our content matter is. And then that's more of maybe a tangible, but the intangible would just be, do you be you more Mm -hmm. consistently Mm -hmm. and just make sure that you are showing up consistently. As cliche as that is, it's it's what allowed us to, so, he, so here's the funny thing, you know, I certainly have a number of years on you guys and I was later to the social game than you were. Right. And I, I actually have, I Neiman, I wish you had somebody like you, you know, I have, I've had my son help me with, with, with videos and he wants to kill me. He's 13 years old and having to film dad. He just, you know, it's, it's a torture for the poor kid. And, but it's funny, like, you know, <clears throat> so me growing up in the business world, you know, when I started out, okay, I'm 52. So when I started out, you know, it was always, you know, fake it till you make it. And then just it, you're putting up a facade, you're putting up a front. And that's mm. f- very contrary to how we really embrace business and branding today. As you said a number of times and you're spot on right, be authentic, be who you are. You and, will get yourself in trouble nowadays. Yeah, right. With, well, with that, that type of approach. Yeah. You'll get canceled. That, You'll get canceled in 2020 COVID. Yeah. It's proven like there's a level of distrust and I don't want to go into, you know, <laughs> magic, whatever, but we can go deep there, but really authenticity, you know, yes. there's so much information out there that people now can spot that phoniness, that fakeness. So yes. um, there's so much of it. So it's like, yep. wow, this person makes me feel a different type of way than everybody else. That's a good place to be. Yeah. And, and it, qu- quite frankly, somebody who grew up, you know, in business a number of years ago, where it was all about appearance and everything had to be perfect. I got to be honest, it's a lot more liberating. You know, I, I am who I am <laughs> and, and that's it. You, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who looks like Walter White. I mean, that's that's what I can say. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> so, all right, Lauren, let me ask you then. Um, you know, I, I watched a number of your projects and one thing that you do that I think is very interesting and I guess if, I guess from the business perspective, why did you decide to, you talk about the profit. You say, you know, I, I bought this piece for $60, you know, the, my labor, my materials, I made a profit of this. That's a very interesting, you know, message to, to share. Why did you guys decide to do that? Well, um, we started the channel based off of me paying off my student loan debt. And so I had this, you know, big chunk of money that I had already made $3,000 before we started even filming the YouTube videos. Right. Um, but the only way that we could be transparent with the numbers is to share the numbers. And right. um, even even after, you know, we I paid off my student loan debt and things like that, we really felt like people were connecting with us and being inspired. And like, we were letting them know that this is possible. Um, It doesn't, it it, it may feel like you're asking way too much money uh, for a piece that you may redo, but it's possible. There Mm. are people out there that are interested in your work. I teach patience. That's a whole nother thing. But you know, some of my pieces sit for a day. Some of them have sat for six months. Um, but I'm right. still sharing those profits now, today, even after I've paid off my student loan debt, um, because people are interested in that. And then kind of, I guess, even though we're not paying off student loan debt anymore, it also attracts people, um, maybe even some negative people. But sometimes on social media, yeah. that's what you need to to continue like growing, I guess. Yeah. 
you know what? You know, so it's funny. So, so you had the twenty five thousand dollars. You pay that off, and you did it in a relatively short period of time. Was it like two years? If I had that right? Um, it was actually about four months that we started our YouTube channel, and then we paid off the debt. We started. Um, we promised our subscribers that. When we turned on the monetization um, about a month after starting our channel, that right. all of that money would also go toward my student loan debt. Um, so I didn't per se make the entirety of the money for my student loan debt from the profits of flipping furniture, but I would say about right. 50% of it at least was. Wow. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's crazy. Go, go ahead, go ahead. It's crazy because, you know, I, I think I don't want that to I want people to understand how much stuff that we do from a production standpoint that slows her down. I think in that six and this is a theoretical, but six months to a year, if somebody's going like we were doing it every day right. for twenty five thousand dollars. I really do believe we at the rate because we raised fourteen, fifteen thousand from that six month period of just furniture flips. Um, yeah. So it's it's easily doable, but we slow things down, or I slow things down. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, with, with the my production, process. and then <laughs> now that we've got the business aspect of it as well. Like if someone was just flipping furniture and they were like right. pounding out pieces, you know, I used to be able to flip, you know, twelve to fourteen pieces in one month, and then just think about the profit on that. Well, uh, actually, that was was you, you did twelve pieces. Was it in Christmas? It was Flipmas. Your, your 12 pieces yeah. in December. The, I, I like that. That was funny. Um, so, all right. So l l let's just talk about the furniture now. So from a creative perspective, Lauren, you find a piece of furniture. What do you have to see to say, wow, I'm buying this. And when you get that piece, are you already in your head seeing what the end product will look like? Yes, I definitely have to have like a aha moment or like a, I need that piece um, mm -hmm. pretty much right away. Sometimes I'll be like, I feel like I will get a good idea for this. Um, but I do pretty much all the time have like, aha, yes, I need that. Um, I really like to look for like trendy styles of pieces. So like right now, um, mid-century modern furniture is very in style. Um, some of it is pretty expensive, but if you mm. can find, you know, the pieces for cheaper, um, I'd say I wouldn't pay more, much more than like $100 for like a solid wood mid-century piece, um, but it still needs love. Like I'm not trying to go out and grab all of the wood furniture and paint it all up and like make everybody mad. I am more looking for the pieces that are, you know, cheaper and they're, they have a little damage. They need a little love. Um, but I, I get inspired by other creators as well. Instagram mm -hmm. is a very, um, is, is we have a community of furniture flippers that are just, it, we're very close and we take um, we lift each other up. We use each right. other's ideas insp as inspiration and things like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I could certainly imagine. Listen, I didn't a furniture flipping community. I in, until I saw you, I didn't know. But, you know, uh, <laughs> th th I mean, th think about all of just just for the environment, just for these great pieces of furniture that fell into either they were forgotten or disrepair. And now you breathe new life into them. I mean, from that, I mean, that's an interesting aspect as well. And that's, that's a big thing with sustainability and, and some more of the, yeah. the business and things because people will bash on us all the time. And so it's really just trying to bridge the information gap between these are pieces that otherwise would have ended up in the landfill. Yeah. And now we're bringing value, not only to the piece, but we're bringing value to, uh, you can just read our comments, man. Like what Lauren is doing is so empowering and you know, retired people, people that just got fired or people that are teachers that they do this as a mental stressor, you know, a mental health thing. Like it's, it's weird how I would have never thought the power that flipping furniture would have had, but it's so much deeper. And that goes with, it, it could be with anything that anybody mm -hmm. decides to put their love and their passion and their full present, their soul, their essence behind. So, I mean, 
like I said earlier, 200,000 subscribers, YouTube, almost 200,000 on Instagram. I don't, are you guys on TikTok? I don't even know. I don't, I don't, e I don't even go on TikTok. That's yeah. too much for me. I can't handle that. Um, <laughs> we are on TikTok. Yeah. You're are, growing well, over there. It's a yeah. I mean, it's a great thousand. idea. I, I just yeah. can't, I, I can't handle that. Um, so, all right. So we, we, we kind of touched upon it a little bit. Now I've, I've, you know, in preparation for the show and in just following you, I've seen a lot of comments of people. Um, and again, I was just scrolling. Right. And most of them were, were good, positive, you know, fun, whatever. Um, unfortunately we know there's an element of social media that is dark. It is negative. It can be nasty, could be toxic. Uh, and yeah. when you have as many followers as you do, you know, you know, unfortunately, you know, you're going to get some wackos in the mix. I mean, that's all there is to it. Right. Um, what, was there a point Lauren? Because again, it's, you know, Neiman, no offense to you. You're behind the scenes guy critical, obviously. Yeah. Right, but you're the behind the scenes. We're gonna yeah. start losing views if, we, if, I, if I start showing up. Right, right, yeah. Let's 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 keep Lauren out there. So, but but it's so you're the, you're the production guy, okay? But it's Lauren's art that is out there, and it's being judged. It's your creativity, etc. So here, here's my question: um, Have there been points, Lauren, where people comments, you know, a do you read them if they're negative? Have they gotten to you? Um, and any tough moments with that? I think in the very beginning, you know, like you said, it was all positive things. But then when you start growing, there are going to be those trolls. And yeah, at the yeah. very beginning, when we started, you know, receiving these more negative comments, I mm -hmm. kind of didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I kept, you know, going and we didn't ever miss an upload. We uploaded every, every week, twice a week. Um, but Neiman and I had to sit down and I think with my parents too. And we were like, you know, these are just people that don't have anything better to do with their lives that, yeah. you know, I, I'm just being like how we need to think of it at least. Um, yeah they don't have anything better to do or they're not happy with like the place that they are in, in their mm. lives. And so they feel the need to come on, um, right. on our channel or our platforms and say these different types of things. Um, but we can't let that, you know, mm -hmm. affect us. Now I don't let it affect me anymore. I kind of just laugh it off because most of them I think are kind of funny. Cause it's like, you actually, felt the need to tell me that like you I right. don't know that's gonna change what I what I do and now it's like thank you for the engagement <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that thank you. right 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 yeah it, um but it, but now I basically just continue on like there are every once in a while gonna be those comments that like really do get to me especially when we share more of the personal um mm -hmm. side of our lives which what is what we're sort of try, um starting to do a bit more um mm -hmm. but i've still like we still just continue to push past it and 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 really focus on the people who have been with us for the, those two years and then those supporters mm. and people who have been inspired and like remind remember the real reason that we are doing this it always makes it easier to have people in your corner as well and like mm -hmm. the whole community of furniture flipping you know they'll send like we'll send each other love like hey we've seen some of these comments we just mm -hmm. want you to know we love you but then also like having each other and then having such supportive like family around has really made that those moments uh not be so so deep and dark so, so it sounds like you got uh some great parents in your corner lauren Yes, for sure. Awesome. They're the best parents ever. They've let us live here on and off and flip in their garage in the dead of winter <laughs> for two winters straight and they park in the driveway and don't get to go in the garage. They're they're the best. Yeah. Oh, that's that's love right there. All right, so so yeah. let me ask you this then. So it's you, you achieved the first goal the must have. I got to pay off this $25,000 in debt. You did that great. It's really it's really exploded. So then where do you guys see the business going, uh, you know, even just in the next few years, what are your real growth goals for this? 
I think uh, before we really get into the future, one thing I want to say about hitting that first goal and then going forward mm-hmm. is we, I think, to an extent, uh, lost track of almost who we were and like what we were about to an extent of just losing track and, and um, alignment with the vision that we had, which was just to provide value and to empower and to right. bring educational content to people um, to an extent. Now we kept growing. Um, but I just want to say, make sure, you know, because I know other people, business owners have that, have that notebook, have those goals, have that vision that you, you know, you have in your back pocket and don't fall off track because as soon as we started to fall off track from that vision, it's like our numbers began to maybe flatline a little bit. I would never say they were in a deep dive, but it wasn't the growth trajectory that we've seen. And now that we're back to that education, going Mm -hmm. deeper with community, with the client, it's we're just we're right back to where you know we once were at one point. So just wanted to say that. But goals. Or if you do, you know, maybe go go astray a little bit. And what he's talking about is we ended up um, buying a house and we're renovating it into an Airbnb. And so we are sharing that content a lot more um, on our channel instead of the furniture flip. So we really weren't talking about profit anymore or flipping furniture, and people uh. really seem to miss that. Um, and so now that we have done the 12 days of flip miss, people absolutely <laughs> loved it. And they were like, yes, like, what are you, what have you been doing? And so and I'm kind of right. like, what have we been doing? And he's kind of like, what have we been doing? Um, but now, you know, that's when we're like, okay, we're back in it for the furniture flipping. And so going forward, um, we are actually going to be launching a, our very first furniture flipping course so um that's going to be launching in february so everyone like you know we give a lot of valuable information for free on youtube but there's always these people that are like okay we want more though or sometimes people even just like you know i want to they think that they need to pay for like all of the information or something and so we are just it's going even deeper than we do in any YouTube video, two and a half hour course. Um, we filmed it and we're, our editor is editing it probably as we speak right now. Shout out to Harrison, our Ooh, well, full-time editor. Yeah. <laughs> we could not be doing what we were doing without him. And also now that we have gotten the student loan debt out of the way, now there's like some consumer debt that we are looking to we're basically now on our complete debt-free journey. Yes. So credit card debt. Um, Which is great. Yeah. We had some cars. Yes. We had some cars that we were starting up a new business with, like a private rental insurance company, uh, or not, not insurance. insurance, excuse me, rental company that we had purchased last year. We just sold those off to consolidate on that debt, but now it's complete debt-free all around through the means of furniture flipping and the community there. I, I just love how you go from being a kindergarten teacher and I got to figure out how to pay off debt to a completely legitimate, growing, thriving business with a great following. I mean, you know, if people tried to create a business plan for that and follow the business plan, it it would not be easy. I'm telling you, I'm glad you guys didn't write a business plan. It might've talked you out of doing it. I I, I think there's bliss and ignorance, you know? Um, Yeah. So let, let me ask this then. What's that? I was going to say, we also want to get into like products, right? So we, you know, we do a lot of affiliate sales as one of our main drivers of income. And at one point, you know, it's really, this is where it gets messy with, lining up manufacturers and, and all of this yeah. stuff. So if there are any manufacturers out there for clothing <laughs> or for um, a chemical engineers that need some work. We want to, we want to go with a paint line. We, you know, there's certain outfits that Lauren wears like overalls that we would like to have like our own manufacturing, <laughs> like, you know, not car hearts, but we want our own line of painting, furniture, flipping, painting gear, that type of stuff to really begin to um, automate this business, but also, I guess, diversify what we do and what we're able to offer. So is it like, I'm almost getting the sense here is somewhat in a, in a different realm, but like Chip and Joanna Gaines, am I, is, is that where you guys are heading? I, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm getting that sense a little bit. Am I, am I wrong? I think that there's only one Chip and Joanna Gaines. 
Uh, we, we draw inspiration, but you know, with the opportunity for streaming platforms, um, getting our own sure. show hosted on one of those, um, the the ability of YouTube, it's just yeah, who knows? But yeah, you, you, don't, use them you as don't know. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to always. I don't want. Yeah. Th all right, this has been a great conversation, guys. I, I appreciate you for coming on. Um, Thanks for having us. So here's my last question. Uh, as you look back, and so much has happened in a very short period of time, relatively speaking, you know, in the life of a business. Lauren, if you had a do-over, a mulligan, what would it be? Um, I'm thankful for everything that we've been through, but mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I we probably would have put or continued on with the furniture. Um, mm -hmm. but I think I've I've grown as a person through the Airbnb renovations because we did a lot of that ourselves. So like I don't want to take that away. Um, but I would just like kind of go hand in hand and like have an Airbnb flip video and a furniture flip video, like kind of going back and forth just so that we could continue to, you know, keep the people that we inspired from the beginning um, inspired. But now that we're back to that, um, I don't think that I would change anything else. What about you? Whew. I think at, I would have hired, hmm, this is, I would have hired a coach. I would have hired a, 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 I'm very in the moment with it as we go. And I think that there's power in drawing from inspiration mm -hmm. and like gut feeling all the time. But I think that there are, we could have just had a better strategy on how to scale. I have high expectations. So I feel like we could already be at seven figures. And so that's why I say that because I look at other people in our field and I just, we don't know what we don't know. So I probably would have hired somebody to write out a trajectory for us once we started seeing some serious results. Well, listen, you know, I have no doubt you guys will be infinitely bigger than you now are. Not that you, where you are now isn't great, of course, but I'm saying just because I've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs in a lot of different industries, right? Um, I feel very confident in saying, um, that, Hey, I knew those guys went, <laughs> okay. I just hope you'll still take my call five years from now. You know, the host of what, who, uh, Tim, I don't know. I uh, don't know, but you, you, you guys, are, uh, you, you guys, you guys are going to explode this and listen, you could still hire a coach and you could still get insight on scaling. Uh, cause that, yeah. that's actually a great point. Neiman scaling is not easy. Um, yeah. so getting an objective third party opinion could be a smart move. I like that. And it's funny. Uh, we just got one. We, so we just finally took oh, you that did. leap. Okay, good. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So, awesome. Right. Well, listen, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being on board the profit express. And again, what's the handle they can follow you, uh, Lauren at furniture flipping teacher on all the platforms. They nice and simple, nice and consistent. I love it. Guys, thanks so much for being on board. I love the story. Lauren, your story is awesome. Neiman, you're awesome at the marketing and the branding. You do an excellent job, guys. Thanks so much for being on Thank board you, today. Friend. You got it. Thanks. Farewell. Bye. And this is The Profit Express. And you can follow us on Instagram at The Profit Express, uh, on YouTube at The Profit Express. And listen, be on lookout Four shows like the one I just had today with the furniture flipping teacher, Lauren Hull and Neiman Sneed. They drop every Wednesday. And until next week, this is the Profit Express. You and me together, let's continue to win the battle for business.